These days, renters are feeling the pressure of high interest rates just as much as homeowners, with rents going up 20% in a year. But here's where things get a little bit more interesting. Buying a home now could actually be the more cost-effective choice, especially with some houses in Toronto selling below $700,000 lately. If you're new here, I'm Samantha Chan from Elevate Realty, and our brokerage wants to help you make smarter real estate choices in Toronto. If you do enjoy this content, all I ask is that you give this video a like and subscribe if you want to keep learning from us. Let's begin. Rents have gone up a lot in Toronto, and it looks like the bigger the unit, the higher the increase has been. Now, for homeowners, the impact of interest rates were actually a lot more than that even, with mortgage payments going up by almost 70% for the same size loan. But also, because of this, this has actually pushed Toronto real estate prices down, and lately it looks like we're hovering at around 15 to 20% below peak prices. Here's the trickier part. That data doesn't tell us what type of houses have been selling and what people have been buying has been changing too. When the market was hot, houses that needed a lot of work were selling just as quickly as those that were in great condition ready to move in. Nowadays, there's less buyers and because it is tougher to borrow money to fund renovations too, houses that need a lot of work are actually much tougher to sell today and so the actual change in price that we're seeing might be more than what data is telling us. Here's an example to try to explain myself a little bit better. And I wanted to add that these are not real numbers because we don't have the data for it, but this is just an illustration to show you what I mean a little bit better. Let's say at the peak, houses that don't need work were selling for around $1.4 million and those that needed work were selling for $1.1 million. If there were the same number of each of these types of houses sold, then the average price sold during that time would have been $1.25 million. Now let's exaggerate and assume that no one is buying houses that need work these days and the move-in ready houses are selling for $1.05 million. Now, as you can see, average prices show that prices have dropped by 16%. But in reality, move-in ready houses have actually come down 25% and we might be seeing even bigger drops for houses that need work if they were actually selling. Now, lately, we're also seeing a few more things that have been changing in the real estate market in Toronto. Offer dates aren't nearly as popular, but if a listing agent is still using this tactic, instead of listing at $999,000 to drum up attention, it looks like you actually need to list closer to $699,000 these days, which is a 30% discount. Now, if you look at the October real estate sales data, it doesn't look like prices have moved much in October yet, but we have been noticing something new lately in the more recent days in November. So what we're seeing now is that sellers are finally starting to list lower with no offer dates. And when this happens, it really gives us a better idea of what the actual price the seller wants instead of the offer date situation where the expected price from the seller could be much more. And this is a big sign that sellers are probably finally starting to adjust expectations lower in our softer market. And when prices drop and rents come up, it also becomes more interesting for renters who are looking to buy. It could work even better if you're buying a house to live in and you're willing to rent out part of the house to help cover your expenses, and this is what we call house hacking. Last year, when prices dropped, it still didn't work as well as today because rents weren't as good and sellers weren't as motivated to sell, and so the math just didn't work as well unless you were willing to do major renovations, and not many first-time homebuyers would realistically have the money for that, or if you're willing to live in the smaller basement unit, which didn't really work for young professionals either because it felt like a downgrade compared to their nice rented condo. But things have continued to change and you can now house hack without big renovations and live in the nicer upper unit and it's still better to buy and rent, which is huge. Now let's take a closer look at the numbers. If you rented a two bedroom condo today, you might have to pay around $3,300 a month plus the cost of hydro and insurance, which adds up to $3,400 a month. These days, you can buy a bungalow instead in Toronto for around $750,000, and that's all done up and split into two units. 
If you rent out the basement for $17.50, you might end up with a monthly cost of around $27.50 a month, which ends up being less than renting a condo. When you buy a house, you're not only out of pocket less each month, but you're also gaining on the house side too. Here's how it adds up each year. You save around $7,500 each year out of pocket, and then you also gain $7,400 each year because you're slowly paying down your mortgage, and that's called our principal pay down. And then on top of that, your house might also go up in value each year. And on average, we would conservatively estimate that to be 3% a year, which equals $22,000 a year. And this is all based on the purchase price of $750,000. So in total, if you house hacked instead of rented, you could end up with $37,000 in benefits each year. And that is a pretty smart choice. Now here are a few things that you do need to know if you're thinking about house hacking. It's only a good choice if you don't plan on moving anytime soon because there are big fees each time you buy and sell. In our $750,000 bungalow case, buying and selling fees do come up to around $70,000, which ends up canceling out all of the benefits if you own the house for only a couple of years. And two, in order to get a mortgage, you will need to have enough income to qualify. So using TD's calculator, if you buy that bungalow in our example, you would need around $160,000 of combined family annual income. The good thing with our example is that if you rent out the basement, then your rent also helps you qualify for a bigger mortgage. And finally, you will have to also have enough savings for the down payment and closing cost too, which ends up being around $175,000 in our bungalow example based on a 20% down payment. You do have an option to go with a lower down payment with an insured mortgage, but you would have to qualify for a bigger loan and also you would end up having higher monthly costs if you go that route too. If you're interested in seeing how you can make smarter real estate choices or what kind of house hacking options are out there in Toronto, just reach out to our team. We're not your typical real estate sales brokerage. Instead, we focus on using data and numbers to help you make smarter real estate decisions in Toronto. If you want to chat privately with us, just head over to this link right here to set up a time to chat. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video if you know anyone who might like it too. There's also more real estate and investing content for you to check out on our website or on social media as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.